good. I was one in four last week. I so many of these were just heartbreaking. All right. I had Miami. So if Tua doesn't get hurt, who knows what happens in that game? But you know, that that goes off the rails. The Lions just cannot stop anybody. And with all those runs in the second half, which is just like Jesus. The Jags play in a rainstorm, which yeah. I, and then the Colts are just the Colts. And so now yeah. I'm one and four. I'm nine and eleven on the season. I am slowly unraveling here. <laughs> and I think that might continue as we get into our week five picks. All right. I'm going to start with those Lions. They are getting three and a half points. Explain it. Against Bailey Zappi? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's, it's the scary. mere fact that it can't be explained is why I'm not picking it. That's, I, I, I probably <laughs> should. I probably should be scared <laughs> off of it. But I'm picking the Lions plus three and a half at New England. I'm probably going to regret that. I have the Seahawks plus five and a half against the Saints. Maybe it's just because of all of the Geno Smith Kool-Aid that we were drinking here over the course of this show. But you know, the Saints have been pretty disappointing on offense. I think that the Seahawks have been a lot better. I don't know if the Saints are five and a half points better than the Seahawks right now. I have the Eagles minus five and a half against the Cardinals. I think the Eagles are good. I think the Cardinals are bad. Yeah, so, good uh, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> I had the Cowboys plus four and a half against the Rams. We talked about that game earlier. Yep. I don't know, man. That Cowboys defense against this Rams offense right now uh, the, I don't think the Rams are that much better than a Cooper rush led Cowboys team with the way that their offensive line is playing. And I've got the chiefs minus six and a half against the Raiders. I just think that the chiefs are a lot better than the Raiders are. Uh, I think that that offense has really found its stride and, you know, I'm really struggling to find games. I like, and I like the chiefs, so I might as well go that way. I know I I'm, I'm kind of like tempted by the Eagles minus five and a half, five and a half, just for your analysis. <laughs> the Eagles are good. And the Cardinals are bad. It's like that's, that's, I know, it's but not, not a bad way to go. Yeah, not I a bad know. way to go. Uh, I'm going against I'm, my first one. I'm 12 and eight so far this season, two and three last week. That it put a sour taste in my mouth for the same reasons. I can't believe the whole time I'm like, I bet the Colts. I bet the Colts as favorites. <laughs> bet the Colts as favorites. What are you doing, Nate? But I did not, I'm not doing them this week. They were my no fly zone, man. Um, mm-hmm. So, anyways, get to my picks. Going Jaguars, minus six and a half, hosting the Texans. I got to check this weather, make sure it's not rainy. And make sure that Trevor Lawrence has a nice, beautiful 72 degree day. And I think we'll be okay. I think this Jaguars team is a good team. Like, I really do think uh, we, we, we're all excited about them, but I do think, like, in week 17, we're back. Man, that Eagles Jags game, those were two good teams going at it. So, mm-hmm. Jags minus six and a half. Um, I'm going to go with the Falcons plus eight and a half against the Bucks. Do, don't think this Falcons defense is going to hold up great against a healthy Bucks receiving core. But I do think that's a lot of points in this. I think it's going to be a nice little fun shootout a little bit. I, I think this is going to be back and forth. So I'm just going to take the points there. Um, I'm going to go with the Dolphins minus three and a half at the Jets. Uh, the Jets are starting Zach Wilson. And I know he had a good fourth quarter, but I think this Dolphins defense does some nice things that will manipulate where he wants to look. Um, maybe, maybe try and make him go into creation mode. I do think the Dolphins with Teddy Bridgewater if he's starting, uh, yeah, the two is out this week. Yes. If Dolphins, like, with, with Teddy starting is, it's a little, like, they can manage. Like, I think they're going to be able to do some things still. So I think that game is going to be actually a pretty interesting game. Cowboys plus four and a half. Agree with you. I think it's just the Banshees of this Cowboys defense against the Rams. I don't know. I think this will be a very close game. I'm just taking the points here um, and, and just hoping that I think it's going to be an ugly, like, 2017 slog, 17-13 yeah, yeah. Yep. type game. And so, yeah, taking the points there. Then the last one, this one was tough. Um, I went with the Ravens minus two and a half, hosting the Bengals. As we talked about it on this show, though, I felt worse and worse about this bet. <laughs> as we were, so my confidence in this one is not that great, but I'm doing the Bengals minus two and a half, thinking they're going to bounce back game. They Even with all the blemishes they've had, the, Bengals, mm-hmm. the Ravens have played good ball this year. I think it's going to be a close one, but uh, it's less than a field goal, so hopefully you're going to take that. All right, guys, I went four and one last week, feeling pretty good, 13 and seven. There were a couple of run your pool wins, ones that uh, were at two and a half or three and a half that had moved to three that actually ended up being pushes on Sunday. But hey, we don't care about that here. Very happy to take that four and one, 13 and seven on the season. Unanimous, you guys, on Cowboys and Rams for all the reasons you guys have said. So I will just blow right past that one. Nate, we're against each other uh, on two picks. I like the Bucks laying eight and a half against the Falcons. This feels like a spot where they just get right, they get home for this game. I think the Falcons are going to have a lot of trouble against that Buccaneers defense. I just don't think they're going to be able to do what they've done against Cleveland, against Seattle, against Tampa. 
and that Tom Brady and company are going to be able to get things moving. This is the healthiest the offense has been really all season for Tampa. So I like Tampa to take care of business in that one. And then I also like the Bengals getting two and a half. Uh, I just – I would like it a whole lot better if it were three or three and a half for obvious reasons. But I just think when you stack these teams up against one another with what we've seen Cincinnati's defense able to do this season, that I would like either team getting points. If this were flipped in Cincinnati and Baltimore was getting two and a half, I would like Baltimore in this spot. I just think this is a game that is very closely played between two quality teams. So I'll go ahead and take the points. I'm also on the Dolphins. The move from Tua to Teddy Bridgewater in the betting market feels like a little bit of an overreaction here, so I will happily take the Dolphins at minus three and a half. And then finally, I'm surprised that neither of you guys took the 49ers with everything I, we've been talking about. That I so thought, I can't, I can't trust Jimmy with six and a half <laughs> on the road. I can't. I can't <laughs> After I, everything you guys said with Deontay, I was like, oh, this is going to be like a unanimous pick with what that defense yeah. is going to do to Baker. So I get it, Robert. I totally understand where you're coming from. But it's going like, to be a nine-three finish where the, the <laughs> Niners have 17 sacks and you're going to lose that bet. That is, that's my concern. I was looking at, I, I, so this is very true. I picked it and then I stepped back and I was like six and a half on the roads. A lot of points for this Niners offense right now. Yeah, and then sure. I unclicked it and I picked another game and I don't even remember which game I picked. And that tells you how much I know yeah. about doing this. I mean, couldn't this just be seven, nothing <laughs> like, like, right? Where, or where it could be Panthers... six, nothing. And you lose that bet. That's <laughs> where, my concern. Where the Panthers find any points in this game. I know. Defensive I know. touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's been oh, yeah, but they want robber. Yeah, they're, yes. Jimmy they're gonna, gonna play one pick. robber. Yeah. And Jimmy's gonna yeah. throw it right to whoever that, that safety is. The now Debo Samuel, out. the Debo Samuel touchdown last week was this oh close God. to a pick six going the other way. I, I, I can't do it. I, I just truly I cannot do it, even if I think the, the Panthers <laughs> will score negative points on offense. By the way, <laughs> Kevin Smith in the chat right now said that yeah. the Eagles also played in a rainstorm. Kevin Smith, go back and listen to the Sunday podcast. We spent 25 fucking minutes talking about the Eagles offense and what they did in that game. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not going to let it movie. slide. Go write another hey, movie. Yeah, Philly fans, I mean, uh, like, you got to understand, you guys are like the fourth biggest market in the country. You guys are nobody's little brother. Like, uh -huh. you are not, like, you guys are, you guys are the bullies. Like, yeah. I, I want you guys to understand that. There's no nobody believes in us. You guys have such a big market. The yeah. amount of time and energy we have spent talking about the uh -huh. Eagles on this show over the yeah. last week or so is insane. Yeah. I'm not going to let an always, We've got an always sunny in Philly drop in this show. It was, right. this it was, show. A, it was a rainstorm, <laughs> and Trevor Lawrence dropped the ball three times. It's not that the Eagles were at some disadvantage, or the Jaguars were at some disadvantage because it was raining. It's that it was a weird game because it happened in a rainstorm. <laughs> yes. All right, that's all yes. I got.